to examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. To examine your salvation experience. If there's, if there's any doubt in your mind as to whether or not you're saved, that can be dealt with today before we leave here. You don't want to leave unsure. There are many people who are not sure. You ask them, are, have you been saved? Are you born again? They say, well, I think so. Well, I'm going to attempt with God's help to answer some questions today that will hopefully clarify some issues. Many people, probably many of you here, have a physical done every six months or once a year, right? You go to the doctor and you get a physical checkup. But how many of you know that it's even more important to get a spiritual checkup? Very important. So we're going to look and see what Jesus has to say about this topic. Everyone here, hopefully you know that. You've been born physical. That's no surprise to you. If you're here, you're born, you have been born physically. If Jesus doesn't return in your lifetime, you will die physically. But have you been born spiritually? That's what we want to look at today. Jesus talks about it. I would ask you to turn in your Bibles to John chapter 3. The Gospel of John chapter 3. And we're going to start in verse 1. And it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. Verse 7 says, Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The title of the message today is, You Must Be Born Again. So, just to give a little backdrop here, the Pharisees were the most conservative theologians of their day. Jesus got on them, of course, he criticized them, he even called them hypocrites. Why? Because they were very religious. They did a lot of religious things. Not all these things were bad. As a matter of fact, in order to become a Pharisee, you had to memorize the first five books of the Bible, known as the Pentateuch. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. I didn't say study. They had to memorize Okay, we can't even come close to that. Not even that, not only that, but they prayed, they went to church, they fasted twice a week, and they tithed. They gave 10% of their income to the church. So not everything about them was bad. Nicodemus, I want to just share a little bit, little bit more about him than we normally do. So he was a Pharisee, he was a professor of the law, so he taught the law, and the Bible says he was also a ruler of the Jews. Now, there, he was a part of the religious authority of the Jews. It was called the Sanhedrin. That was a group of 70 men, and the Pharisees taught the law, and then the Sanhedrin, they enforced the law. So, just for sake of understanding, in our time, we'll say Nicodemus was a minister and a senator. Okay? And so, he comes to Jesus, and 
Now, I may, I may call him Nick from time to time just because I do love to give nicknames. Some of you know that well. I've given you some. So, Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night and he says to him, Rabbi. No, first, the first thing we want to notice about that is he ascribed a title that only, according to them, belonged to the Pharisees. You didn't call anybody else a rabbi. So what he was actually doing was giving Jesus a compliment. Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Typical Pharisee, because they believe heavily in signs. So he addresses Jesus with respect, showing that I understand you're an authentic teacher of the word of God. But one thing I love about Jesus is he doesn't mince words. Nicodemus was trying to, you know, beat around the bush. Jesus goes straight at it. He's a straight shooter. He says, listen, you're going to hell. That's basically what he said. You must be born again. He, didn't, he was entertained because, of course, he knows the heart. The Pharisees did everything outwardly. They appeared to men to be very godly and pious in their long robes. And, of course, we know they would go about and pray openly on the street corners. When they fast, they would wash their face or pull or brush their hair. Why? Because they wanted to appear to men as being godly. But that's when Jesus said, yeah, I know what you do on the outside, but inside, you're full of dead men's bones. You're whitewashed on the outside, but you're full of wickedness on the inside. Why? Their, their heart wasn't involved in anything that they did. It was all for appearance. So Jesus said, Jesus said, you must be born again. And he didn't say it to somebody who was on the street. He didn't say it to Zacchaeus, who was a tax collector, and we know that he was a crook. He didn't even say it to the woman who was married five times and was now living with a man who she was married to. He said it to a minister of the word. Somebody who attended church faithfully, who fasted, who prayed, who tithed. And he said, you're missing something. You're missing the most important thing. You must be born again. To be born again literally means to be born from above. Or to be born spiritually. Nicodemus was trying to say in the natural, in the physical, saying, what do you mean born again? Can a man when he's old go back into his mother's womb? He, he didn't get it. He was just dealing with the natural and Jesus was trying to get him to understand, no, this is spiritual. Jesus even said to him, you're, you're a teacher of the law and you don't understand this? You don't understand spiritual things? How can that be? You know, years ago, and I mean many years ago, I remember a saying, a popular saying that ministers would say, oh, you're, we're, too, we're too heavenly minded, we're no earthly good. Any of you ever heard that? But I beg to differ, especially in the day that we're living in now. I think it would be safe to say, we're so earthly minded that we're no heavenly good. We are spirit beings. We are a spirit, right? The Bible tells us that we are made in the image of God. Is God a spirit? Hello? God is a spirit. And if we are made in the image of God, we are also spirits. We tend to push that to the back, but God is saying, no, nah, you need to bring that forefront. Before anything else, you're a spirit. So we are spirit beings, we have a soul, and the soul is our will and our emotions, and then all of that is housed in a body. You see right here that we put, we put so much time and effort and attention into this thing that's passing away. Can I tell you something? It's not a secret. You're dying. I'm 
sorry, this may not be a hallelujah message today, but God is calling for truth today. Every one of us, it doesn't matter how many surgeries you have to do this, pull this up, pull that down. You're dying. This body here is dying. The only thing that will live forever is what we can't see. And it's inside. It's your spirit. And there are many people in the church, just like Nicodemus was in the church. He was an outsider. He was faithful serving in the church. There are many people today who faithfully attend church and they're going to hell. Why? Because they have not 